I know I'm a little late to the without a crystal ball controversy, but let's be real here. It's just starting to get really spicy and I am here for it. I just at this point want to give my two cents on the matter. Um, for legal reasons, I'm going to say a couple things here. One, I am not a lawyer. Two, this is not legal advice. And three, this is my opinion. Please remember that. Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and I illustrate stuff and give my opinions on issues. Today I'm going to be looking at the utterly ridiculous without a crystal ball situation. Okay, so to get started, I'm just going to say this. There's a huge difference between investigating someone and borderline stalking. There's also a difference between legitimate investigative reporting and what Katie's doing. That difference is ethics. Journalists that submit work to places like the New York Times, the Toronto Star, you know, places like that, have to follow certain rules about what they can and cannot say, what they can and cannot do, who they can and cannot talk to, and what sources they can and cannot use. It appears from the outside looking in that Katie's not following a code of ethics similar to those major journalistic associations or publications. Again, I'm not a legal expert. I'm not a journalist, I am a junk food eating, mountain dew chugging, basement dwelling art gremlin, so my opinion's probably worth the approximate value of half a moldy cheese sandwich. That said, I still want to scream it into the void, so here I am. In my opinion, which I say for legal reasons, what Katie did by saying the things she did about the Westbrooks isn't legal. Also, I think she might have made slanderous comments and libelous tweets. Remember kids, J. Jonah Jameson taught us in Spider-Man, when it's in print, it is libel. So basically all the types of defamation. And in addition to that, there's the civil harassment thing, but that's an issue for another time. So if I went around saying the stuff that she said, I would definitely expect to be bitch slapped by a lawsuit so hard it would go back in time. But that's a digression from my point. The main point that I'm trying to make is if my attention deficit ass can see that it's possibly defamatory, like, what's your excuse, Katie? You claim to be a professional reporter, and reporters need to know these rules significantly better than I do. Some real galaxy brain moves there. Moving on from that, I don't understand the assertion she made in that live stream that if they wanted to sue, they already would have done so. I'm not including any clips in this video, and the reason for that is really simple. Allegedly... Um, she has been copyright striking critiques, and she's more likely to do that if I put video or audio in here. Something I learned is that just because you're currently getting away with something doesn't mean you're going to keep getting away with it. It also doesn't mean that people aren't preparing to sue you. It just means that they're waiting to do it to collect evidence. They're dotting their I's, they're crossing their T's. Saying that they would have already sued you is just unbelievably arrogant because lawyers need to take time to set up a lawsuit. Also, before somebody brings up free speech in the United States, that doesn't apply here. Free speech can't be used to hurt someone else. I'm just going to quote a particular U.S. Supreme Court justice named Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr. He gave this opinion in a case called Shank versus the United States in 1919. The most stringent protection of free speech would not protect a man falsely shouting fire in a theater and causing a panic. The question in every case is whether the words used are used in such circumstances and are such a nature as to create a clear and present danger that they will bring about the substantive evils that Congress has a right to prevent. Well, that's a quote that relates to physical harm, I would like to address this. We're in the internet age. It's no longer yelling fire in a theater. In this case, it's yelling snake oil on Twitter. In my opinion, that could potentially be just as damaging. There's another thing that I also really need to quickly address. Just because someone else is doing something wrong doesn't give you permission to do that same thing. I'm fairly sure, but they did it too, is not a valid legal defense. In her lawsuit, Katie, without a crystal ball, tries to bring in Jeffree Star and Shane Dawson. Those parties don't need to be made joinder to this lawsuit. They're not the person being sued. And that does get talked about in the motion to dismiss and the motion to deny that. So after Katie was served with her lawsuit, she missed some deadlines, then handed in a motion to dismiss. 
that motion was far longer than the standing order gave permission for it to be. And this is according to Emily D. Baker. Now, when I was doing my bachelor's degree, if I handed something in beyond the page count, or when one of my students did when I was a TA, sometimes we would legitimately throw those last pages out. And if that was the case here, that would be seriously damaging to a lawsuit because points that are included in later pages can still be necessary. Another thing that came up with it was the issue of the points being relevant. So a lot of them had nothing to do with the actual case. Like saying you were the first person to report on the Clark Swanson lawsuit has nothing to do with the defamation now. And it's just baseless. If this was something that I personally had to grade as a TA based on how everything was relevant and connected together, honestly, I would fail that person. It's just word salad, and it makes a lot of arguments that just don't make sense. Like, legitimately, I've heard six-year-olds make better arguments than the ones that are presented here. I'm not going to rip the whole document apart right now. Um, honestly, comment below if you want that, I guess. But I am going to say one more thing here before I talk about the response. Lying in court is illegal. That's called perjury. And I'm pretty sure it applies to civil court too. Like you're under penalty of perjury if you don't tell the truth. I also believe that sworn statements have to be truthful or it's perjury. Again, not a lawyer. In Katie's motion to dismiss, she says she has no contacts in Washington, has not made any money in Washington. Um, and yet a lot of her research takes place with a lot of documents that are needed that came from Washington State. She has moderators and subscribers who live in Washington, and you can see that in a lot of the documents that were submitted for the case. So how? How can she say that she doesn't have people in Washington? I don't get it. Now, there was also an order not to destroy evidence. And in other words, that's the don't delete shit order. But... Since this has all started, and since the initial lawsuit came in, Katie's been deleting stuff like crazy. That's in defiance of a court order. That's so dumb. It's shooting yourself in the foot. And if she thinks that every video and tweet, live streams included, weren't saved by the plaintiffs or their attorney, which they were, they're on a drop box. I've got news for you. The devil works hard, but the Westbrook's lawyer works harder. Now, not disparaging lawyers at all. Honestly, Saltsy's doing great, and for legal purposes, that was a joke. Now, the Westbrook lawyer's response was a breath of fresh air. It was succinct, it was easy to read, it was so petty, and I am here for that. In the first page, they basically ripped the motion to dismiss to shreds, and I'm bringing up the fact that Katie's lawyer may have done an oopsie. Because here's the thing, you know, it's one thing to lie to the court if you're just a regular citizen, but it's another thing to lie and misrepresent stuff to the court when you're an officer of the court, like Katie's lawyer, which actually gets brought up in the hundred plus page response by the Westbrooks. I'm not kidding. It's in there. It's beautifully petty. So... It also touches on things like Katie's unreliable testimony, and in addition to that, the destruction of evidence and how the claims are ultimately irrelevant, and they don't even list the law that they're saying it should be thrown out under. Again, not a lawyer, don't really understand all that. But when I looked at the motion, I love that it didn't just address the fact that it was super unreliable, but there's receipts, there's videos, there's screenshots, Everything that you need is included in there. And they use them so beautifully. It's hard to say that you don't access documents from Washington when there's literal video evidence, even if you tried to delete it, of you saying that, because it's saved on a Dropbox. Honestly, I find this whole situation messy and ridiculous. 100% Toddy has the right to sue. That's not up for debate to me. But what I would like to point out is that this never should have had to happen. When a person gets a cease and desist, you know, they need to cease and desist. Like, stop doing what they're doing. The fact that without a single brain cell defied four cease and desists and continued to post videos, tweets, and live streams just shows her, her arrogance, honestly. It demonstrates a wanton disregard for privacy, civil law, and common fucking decency. I think the worst part of this is that 
after all of this, Katie's never going to be able to work as a journalist. Every employer does background checks. And she confirmed this in a live stream recently that everybody does background checks. And if you're applying for a job, things that are said on the internet about you can impact your ability to get that job. The hypocrisy is insane. And it's sad that her pride didn't let her handle this appropriately and that she effectively just ended her career and then turned around and admitted it. If it wasn't her, her doing it, she admitted that this is inappropriate and not okay. Anyway, since I'm obsessed with this case, I'm probably going to post more about it. If you like the video, please consider liking, commenting, subscribing. Thanks for watching. This is Alex Illustrate signing off.